Good evening, everyone. It's time for us to begin. We have a smoke and noise making device. Please uh, turn it down, put it on mute so that we won't be disturbed on the services. We want to remember the following people on our prayer list uh, this evening for the Jim Dukes. And we had a meeting, and so the man is going to step up and try to take care of some of the needs that he has up to this week. Keep him in prayer. Brother uh, Pat Wilson has an appointment, uh, had an appointment last week. And so we want to keep him in, in prayer as well. Monica Bainbridge Plain, a sister in law uh, and brother in law, need a prayer. So let's keep them in our prayer list. Also remember Brother Adam Zach, uh, who has a scope coming up on September the 8th. And then uh, our new Christian, Eddie Gaddy, he is suffering from COVID in the facility, uh, is restricted visitors. So if you want to go out and visit him, uh, please take that in mind, we are restricted visitation. Donna Hines has been approved for her shoulder surgery, and that is scheduled for September 1st. Tom Mattis uh, is uh, his contract in uh, Bogota, Colombia, and uh, they are experiencing uh, earthquakes. They've had two earthquakes so far, so we want to keep Tom in our prayers and for his safety. He is doing fine, by the way. Um, hey, um, have family members uh, and, and neighbors in Washington who are suffering from the danger of fires. Uh, so we want to keep them in prayer. The you know, climate change has really taken a turn. Uh, world events uh, are fine. Uh, all kinds of uh, problems are occurring because of that. Michael Rogers and also Brother Gay, uh, Grayson uh, are at uh, training right now at NTC. And we want to keep them in prayer. They are in the area where they're having the hurricane. So we want to keep them, them in prayer. Please keep uh, the Fisher family, the McIntosh family, and also uh, Sister Beverly in prayers as they attend the uh, conference in Tennessee. They should be returning shortly, but they're at PTP. Sister Joan is, Jones is also traveling uh, to uh, Chicago, and we want to keep her in prayers for safety and travel. Ladies, the information, there's a sign-up sheet out there for you, and you're asked to sign up on the uh, sign-up sheet for the upcoming Southwest Ladies Day to occur in September, that's September the 23rd. Uh, if you have ordered t-shirts or you hold for t-shirts, please see Sister Petaway. And uh, for that, uh, the ladies' class will resume Wednesday, August the 30th, uh, beginning at 10 a.m. They're in their eighth uh, month of study, number two series. As a uh, added note, also keep Sister Petaway in your prayers as well. She is suffering and hasn't been with us for a couple of uh, meetings, so we want to keep her in prayer. The teacher's quarterly sign up is scheduled for September the 10th. And if you wish to uh, teach or have an interest in teaching, please sign up for that. We also have our Christian Homes and Family Service change cans available. So if you pick up a change can, uh, fill it up, and then uh, the deadline to have those back is October the 15th. We want to keep those fair. Uh, we got a card from uh, Brother Deans thanking the congregation for all the support they received during his hand surgery. And that went well. And I'll have this in the bulletin board if you'd like to read more. Our lineup for service this evening is Andrew Pettaway will have the first prayer song. It will be uh, Galen Williams. Uh, Scott Davis is not here, but uh, Brother Tucker oh, okay. uh, Alexander will have the script reading, and then um, 
We have our visiting preacher, you know, the sermon. We appreciate the message this morning. Did a wonderful job. Look forward to hearing you again this evening. On the community table, we have Roger James and Jonathan Smith. And then uh, closing the prayer will be Adam Zach. More good announcements? Yes, sir. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us with another opportunity to come back and worship. We ask that what we do this evening will be done in accordance with your word, that it will be decency in your order and pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you give us from your bounty. We ask that you be with all those who are sick, all who are in bereavement for the loss of family members. All who are suffering psychologically, emotionally, financially, or whatever the case may be, Father. We ask that you be with them all and continue to guide us to keep one another and help one another. Thank you for Brother Adam, Father, the outstanding young speaker. We ask that you be with him throughout his life's ministry as he continues to study and grow in the word. We ask that. But he departs to us this evening, he continue to be a blessing to us, he will make us spiritually stronger and closer not only to you, but to each other. Lord, we ask you for the use of our sins, Father, and we pray that you will protect us from the devil, for we intend to do good, we know he is always present, and the devil is always seeking to devour us. But we thank you for everything and we pray. Ask many other blessings in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Please open your hymn books to hymn number 72, 72. Do you have it? Let us see. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bow, Lord, let I be on my For the beyond that we say, I think on every stable land. Oh, then I have Lord, let my God have the ground. I hope that to say, where doubts of God and fears dismay. So they found where these are my prayer, my name is high in the round. Let me up, let me serve. I think on every single night. Oh, you play that I have found. The Lord that I have found high in the round. I want to live. Oh, Lord, though Satan's God had me on earth, faith has called the joyful sound, the song of saints on high in the ground. For the people that we serve, our faith on earth, sing for the land. Still, I'll bring to heaven our 
Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Let me love and let me share. I think I'll have to stay the land. I have to play that I have to learn. Lord, let me be on higher ground. Good evening. Today I'll be reading from James chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, because you know that we will be judged more strictly. For we all stumble in many ways. If someone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect individual, able to control the entire body as well. And if we put bits into the mouths of horses to get them to obey us, then we guide their entire bodies. Look at ships too. Though they are so large and driven by harsh winds, they are steered by a tiny rudder wherever the pilot's inclination directs. So to the tongue is a small, small part of the body, yet has great pretensions. Think how small a flame sets a huge force to place. If you would like to mark the song of imitation, be hymn number 58. 5-8 would be the song of invitation. Song before our lesson would be hymn number 63. Sixty-three. If you have it, let us see. He leadeth me no less in
sings God Good evening. Good evening. It's wonderful to be here this evening. I'd really like to thank you all for allowing me to speak up here today. And I've really enjoyed getting to know each one of y'all and getting to meet y'all. As I go back to Austin, to Southwest, I'll continue to keep the church here at Colleen, to keep them in my prayers and pray for all of your good works that y'all continue to do here. Back home before Southwest, at about senior year of high school, I joined the volunteer fire department back home. And every time I go back home for Austin, whether it be breaks or for the week, um, I'll still be a part of that the volunteer fire department. And for the volunteer fire department, we get our, our pager, we get them on our, on our phones whenever the calls come in. And it was, this, was, this happened before Southwest. I was in my room in the middle of the night one night, and one of those calls came in. And in my county, there's, there's a volunteer fire department, and there's also an EMS section. And those, those, pay, those calls, they come in together. And so sometimes I'll get an EMS call, but I'll just, I'll still listen to it, but I, I only go to the fire department calls. Well, that night it happened to be an, an EMS call. And I had, I had listened to that call and the call was about a young man. He was about junior high age or, or so. And the call was about that young man. And he had unfortunately tried to end his life by shooting himself in the head. But thankfully he, he did survive. And to come that next day, I, I found out that he was, he was going to school. And he had attempted what he had attempted because he had he had been bullied. It's, he was just torn down with words and he just, he wanted the bullying to stop. He wanted the pain to stop. And if that doesn't tell you how powerful our words can be, I, I, I don't know what will. And so this evening, I would like for us to look at a chapter in the Bible that shows us how powerful our words can be. So the text for this evening will be out of James chapter three. James chapter three, if you'll turn there. In James chapter 3, we see the theme is wisdom in Christ, wisdom in Christ. And James, it's also known as, if you will, the, the Proverbs of the, of the New Testament. And so before we get into James 3, let's, let's, let's think about the book of James for a little bit. The book of James, I had a class called the Intro to the, to the New Testament and so we outlined each, each book in the New Testament, and I, I agree with my instructors with his outline of the book. The outline for the book was chapter one, introduction, chapter two, faith, chapter three, wisdom, chapter four, humility, and chapter five, patience. And the book of James, of course, it's written by James, and in James 1.1, 1, 1, if you see there, it's, he's, he's writing to those scattered abroad. And the point you can make there, if you're taking notes, you can... Reference Acts 8, chapter 1. I mean, sorry, Acts 8, verse 1. Acts 8, verse 1. And that is where you begin to see the church in Jerusalem. They, they are persecuted, and, and you'll see that they are scattered abroad. And so James 1, 1, that is who he is writing to, those Christians who are scattered abroad. And so in James 1, James begins to talk about topics that are going to be talked about throughout this whole book. And then in chapter 2, he begins to talk about be, to beware of personal favoritism. And then, of course, he ends chapter two with faith, faith without works is dead. And then we get to chapter three. And in chapter three, we are going to see, we are going to see two main points this evening. Point number one is going to be verses one through 12, the untamable, untamable tongue. Verses one through 12, the untamable tongue. And then verses 13 through 18, we will see earthly versus heavenly wisdom. Earthly versus heavenly wisdom. So let's get into our first main point tonight, verses one through 12, the untamable tongue. And our sub point, first sub point will be verses one through four. Verses one through four, the discourse on the tongue, the discourse on the tongue. So be, if you begin reading with me, I'll be reading out of the New King James this evening. Now, verses one through four, James chapter three. 
Verse 1, my brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment, for we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. If you go back to verse one there, notice the other name that James uses there for brethren. He calls the brethren teachers. Well, as Christians, when we put Christ on in baptism, we have a responsibility to teach others the gospel. This is a direct commandment from Jesus before he uh, ascended into heaven from Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, which is also known as the Great Commission. And Jesus there, he says, go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And notice verse 20, that, or notice verse 20, teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you. And so whenever we put on Christ in baptism, we have that responsibility to teach others the gospel. And we need to take this responsibility seriously because we will be accountable before God on judgment day. And we will receive, as in verse one said, we will receive a stricter judgment. And so we cannot take this responsibility lightly. We need to consider the, the cost in terms of accountability. We need to be accountable for ourselves. And Jesus, he warns about the accountability in Luke chapter 12, verse 48. Feel turn with me there. Luke chapter 12, verse 48. In Luke's version of the parable of the faithful and evil servant. Luke chapter 12, verse 48. Luke 12, verse 48. But he who did not know yet committed things, deserving of strife, shall be beaten with you. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required, and to whom much has been committed, of him they will ask the more. So notice there how we must be accountable for ourselves. And if you go back to James 3, James 3 and verse 2, notice who stumbles. James says there that we all stumble. James included himself among those who had stumbled. He did not excuse his or our own stumbling. We know that we all stumble, but we should Press on for a better walk in the, in the word of God. And no one is perfect. If you'll turn with me to 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1 and verses 8 and 10, you will see that no one is perfect. 1 John chapter 1 verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. The only man, the only perfect man to ever walk this earth was Jesus Christ. Hebrews 4, verse 15. If you'll turn with me there. Hebrews 4, verse 15. Hebrews 4, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, Notice the last part of that verse, yet without sin. The only perfect man to ever walk this earth was Jesus Christ. And Jesus, he demonstrated that our words, they reveal what is inside our hearts. If you'll turn with me to Matthew chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 to 37. Matthew chapter 12 and verses 34 to 37. Verse 34, root of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So notice how... Whatever is inside our hearts will come out of our mouths. So is your heart, is it filled with good or is it filled with evil? And how do we stumble in words? Well, we can stumble in two ways. We can stumble with ourselves and we can stumble with others. With ourselves, we can, we can be boasting. We can have exaggeration. 
or maybe we might have selective reporting. For others, we may have gospel, I mean, not gospel, gossip, sorry. We may have gossip, we may have slander, we may, we may have two-facedness. A, a common one is anger. Whenever we have anger, we sometimes say things that we don't mean. And we must learn to have that self-control. Whenever we are anger, we, we're not filtering what is in our mind. We, we, come, we say what is coming to mind and we don't filter those thoughts. And I want us to turn to 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. We're going to see there Christian virtues that we must have to show love. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. The way I've heard someone explain this is if you think about a, a symphony, you have all these different parts, and all of those different parts are these Christian virtues here. And all of these different parts, they come together, and they come together to make spiritual harmony. And so we must have all of those Christian virtues in our lives, especially self-control. And, and notice that we must show, in order to show brotherly love, we must have that self-control. Now, if you turn back with me to James chapter 3, James chapter 3, I want us to notice the illustrations uh, James uses in verses 3 and 4. He says, a small bit in the mouth controls a strong horse, and a small rudder turns a large ship. Therefore, if we have control over our tongue, we, it is an indication that we have control over ourselves. If you go back to verse 2, you see, whoever can control the tongue can bridle the whole body. The bit and the rudder, they are, they are small, but they are extremely important. If they are not controlled, the, the entire horse is out of control. The entire ship is out of control. And it is possible for something as small as the tongue to have that much power, either for good or for evil. If the tongue is like a bit in the mouth of a horse or a rudder that turns a large ship, it leaves us the question, who or what holds the reins or who or what directs that rudder? Some people, they have no hands on the reins or the rudder. And so therefore they say whatever comes to mind. And so others, they even direct their tongue from their own emotions. And we must, we need to set directing hands on the reins or on that rudder that is our own tongue. So now we get to our, our second sub point here, verses five and six, verses five and six, the power of evil speech. speech. Verses five and six, the power of evil speech. If you'll begin reading with me in verse five. Even so, the tongue is a little member in most great things. See how great a force a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. The fire of the tongue has been used to burn or to destroy many. There's a children rhyme that says, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt. Well, in this case, that is, that is simply not true. Words can hurt just as much. If the bitter pain of a word spoken against someone can hurt us for a, a, lot, a lifetime, longer than a broken bone has had the time to heal. In the two former illustrations, there in verse three and verse four, we see that animals and ships, they are controlled by small objects. We'll notice in this last illustration, in verses five and six, a, a huge forest, it's destroyed by a little spark. And you see the fire, the wildfires happening right now around, around the world. And think about those wildfires. A fire, to become a wildfire, it needs certain catalysts, if you will. And those catalysts, it may be high winds, dry, tall grass, or low humidity. Well, I want you to think about that young man I mentioned in the intro. And think about the catalyst he had in his life. When he went to school, he had those bullies that were waiting for him every day to tear him down with words. That was his catalyst to, to attempt what he had attempted. And so the whole point is this. We, we need to watch what we say to others. We have no idea what may be going on in someone else's life. We need to do the best we can to uplift and encourage one another. 
harmful and critical remarks can they can inflict a lasting injury on someone and it can affect them for the rest of their life. A well-timed encouragement or a compliment that can really help someone in their time of need. In Proverbs, Proverbs, they, Proverbs speaks about a, a man who doesn't consider the destruction of power of his words. If you'll turn with me to Proverbs 26, Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs 26, verses 18 and 19. Proverbs 26, verses 18 and 19. Verse 18. Like a man, man who throws firebrands, arrows, and death, is the man who deceives his neighbor and says, I was only joking. As Christians, we must realize how powerful our words can be. You'll turn back with me to James chapter 3. We will see our final, our final sub point into that first main point. In verses 7 through 12, the untamable tongue. Verses 7 through 12, the untamable tongue. So if you'll begin re reading with me in verse 7. For every kind of beast and bird, a reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. A wild animal can be more easily tamed than the tongue. In verse 8, we see that James, he says that no man can tame the tongue. The untamable tongue, it's even more dangerous when we consider the deadly poison it can deliver. The poison of the tongue, it, it murders men's reputations by, by slandering. It, they're sold by lust and passions that it stirs up in them. And their bodies by contentions it raises against men. The tongue can be used for the highest calling, which is to bless our God. And it can be used for the lowest evil, which is to curse men. As Christians, it's, it should not be said that out of the same mouth receive blessing and cursing. Our speech should be consistently glorifying God. We should have just used one, one vocabulary or one tone when we speak at church and another when we're on the job or we're at home. We need to be consistent, shining lights. Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16. Like a spring, our mouths should send forth fresh and bitter from the same opening. James points to the ultimate impossibility of such a contradiction. If bad fruit and bitter water continue to come forth, it means that there is no good at all. The tree is bad and the spring is bad as well. So if you turn, turn feet to James 3, we will see our second main point tonight in verses 13 through 18, earthly versus heavenly wisdom. Verses 13 through 18, heavenly versus earthly wisdom. And in verse 13, we see our first sub, sub point, wisdom shows us how to do good works. Verse 13, wisdom shows us how to do good works. Feel read with me, verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that this that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Now James began in chapter three by telling the brethren how they should talk. Now he tells them how they should live. Authentic wisdom and understanding, they, they show our lives by our, our good conduct. Peter, if you if you look at first Peter, turn with me to first Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 12. We will see how we should conduct ourselves in the world. 1 Peter 2 verse 12. Let's start at verse 11 actually. Verse 11. We love, I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from flesh to lust, which war against the soul. Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of it's also evident by the meekness, by a meek manner. Those who do good works in a way designed to bring attention to themselves, they, they show a, a, a lack of true wisdom. The word meekness means to have humility, to be lowly in heart, and to be gentle. If you go back with me to James 3, in verses 14 through 16, we see our next sub point, the character of earthly wisdom. Verses 14 through 16, the character of earthly wisdom. 
starting in verse 14. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. And for, and for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. And we see that bitter envy and selfishness are the opposite of meekness and wisdom, as mentioned in verse 13. Anyone who shows bitter envy and selfishness should not deceive anyone, especially themselves, about how wise they are. They show that wisdom that in verse, in verse uh, 16, actually verse 15 there, you see how it describes that wisdom. That is first essential, demonic. It is not true wisdom. It's more of a characteristic of the world, the flesh, and of the devil. The wisdom of the world, the flesh, and the devil, they may be able to accomplish things, but always the ultimate fruit of confusion and every evil thing. And so now if you turn back to James 3, we will see our last subpoint, verses 17 through 18. Verses 17 through 18, the character of heavenly wisdom. Verses 17 and 18, the character of heavenly wisdom. Beginning in verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So we see there that James, he describes heavenly wisdom. And I want to go through that list there that he lists down in verse 17 and 18. See what each of those represent. You have pure, which is in reference to the absence of any sinful attitude or motive. And then you have peaceable, peaceable which is kind, not quarrelsome. Kind, not quarrelsome. And then you have gentle, which is the ability to extend to others the kindly consideration you wish to receive yourself. Then you have willing to yield, which is willing to listen and skilled in knowing when wisely to yield. And then you have full of mercy. The same measure of mercy we grant to others is the same measure God will use with us. Matthew 7, verse 2. And then you have good fruits. The good fruits, they are characteristics that glorify God. Without partiality, that is without judging or inquiring others. Without hypocrisy, that is without pretending to be what you are not. So the fruit of righteousness like you see that with everything. James' concept of wisdom is thoroughly practical. The way we live, the way we should live. It is understanding an attitude that will result in true piety and godliness. Now to wrap up this, this last point, I would like for us to turn to Ecclesiastes 12, verses, 4, verse, verses 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 and 14. If you ever get the time, Ecclesiastes is a, is, a, is a really good book to study. And in Ecclesiastes, you see there the whole time that the Solomon, in most of the book of Ecclesiastes, you, you see how he is seeing a life without God, how it, is, how it is worthless, how it is vain. And then beginning in the middle of chapter 10, and going on to the rest of the book, you begin to see Solomon realize how precious a life is. That verse 13 and 14, we see Solomon have that true concept of heavenly wisdom. And it is a beautiful ending to that book. So let us read verses 13 and 14 of Ecclesiastes 12. Verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's fault. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. I believe right there that that is a true concept of heavenly wisdom. That is something that we must have in our minds every single day. And so I, in conclusion, as Christians, we, we need to be wise in the way we speak and the way that we live. Over and filter through before they even come out of our mouths. Additionally, we cannot be living for the things of this earth but rather what awaits for us after this earth. As this part. We should live our lives for God in the hope that we may be with him someday in heaven. So as we close this evening, 
Let us ask ourselves, am I living for God? At least the Lord's invitation is open. Maybe tonight you, have, you haven't been able to control your tongue. And maybe you've let a few perfect words slip out and maybe you have heard a few. But those outside, you need to get your heart right with God. Like we talked about this morning, he is coming back and we, don't, we do not know when. So the, there, there needs to be a sense of urgency. Maybe you're not a Christian. You would like to become a part of the church or learn more. We're here for you and we love you. Whatever you may need, please let it be known as we stand and as we sing. We have any here this evening that are in need of the Lord's Supper? Please raise your hand. Our closing song will be hymn number 42. Hymn number 42. Would be so kind and are able. Please stand. Thing versus one, two, and three. You have it? Let us sing. And camped along the hills of lucky Christian soldiers cry. And Christ the battle of land, and I shall bear the glowing skies. Against the foe with them, we don't let the blood straight be heard. They did something to me. That overcomes the world. The victory, 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 the victory,
is better over us is the hush for the word of God. We tread the road, the saints of us, with shouts of triumph drawn. By faith in light, the wind is wet, swept over every hill. The same power, stay covered down. It's still our shining shield. Faith, the victory, faith, the victory. Oh, to him that overcomes the foe, by praise it shall be given. Before the angels he shall know his name confess in hell. Then all would call the name of the heart with love for them. Will vanquish all the reasons. Shall we pray? Our most gracious, loving Father in heaven, we come before you again thanking you, Lord, for everything that you do for us and you provide us with. And Lord, know how grateful we are that your son died for our sins, that we can be saved. We ask you to be with those who are traveling at this time, that they get to where they are going safely and back. Please be with our military women and men who keep us safe. We ask you to keep them safe, give them comfort, and bring them home soon. We ask you to be with those, Lord, who are going to have surgery and those who already did, that the surgery be successful or giving them their good health back. As we depart here, we ask your blessings upon us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us back to our next appointed time. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.